to write down everything that I say, like scripture wise, because the I don't have time to go into I don't this. bring my notebook. Get the phone. Only day. Get the phone. Because there's a bunch of scripture, and I promise you'll want to write it down so you uh, go back and read it later and know what it is. Um, I, I can send all, all of them later. Them all. Yeah, just post in a group. Yeah, post, post, post in a group, baby. Sorry. You're going to get this all night. No. <laughs> I can help it. All right, so um, tonight we'll be more and more, uh, I guess, teachy than messagey. We're kind of a smaller group. Kind of the season we're in, I'll just believe we're kind of in a more like teaching environment. Um, so tonight we're going to be talking about evangelism and what evangelism is in our culture especially because it's kind of different um, in different places you go. Um, so the first question is, what is evangelism? And this is just kind of in my own words. Um, evangelism is sharing the gospel to others to point them to God, ultimately salvation through His Son, Jesus Christ. It's plain and simple. Um, I kind of broke it down into three categories. Um, one is those who have never heard. So that would be more kind of You'll, you'll find those in, um, in, in certain places like in America, but you know, mostly Americans have at least heard of Jesus or about it. But when you go to a foreign country, that's where you'll find those who have never heard like, about Jesus. Um, and if you've ever been like, a third world country and shared the gospel, you'll find that. Um, number two, those who believe in something else or reject God. Those who might believe in a different God or they just reject God all together. Um, and then three is those who think they know but really don't and that's kind of more of our culture those who are kind of grown up in church um, and they think they're good and think they're saved but they just don't really know what the gospel is or what it means to follow Christ and so that's kind of what we're going to talk about tonight is um, that so one why we evangelize um, well for one we are commanded in God's word so Trey will go through go to Matthew 28 19 through 20 this is what people heard here as the Great Commission. It says, Therefore, uh, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And then also Mark 16, 15 through 16. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And you can find Luke and John also have their versions of it. Um, but also it should be our desire to share the gospel and see people come to Christ um, because it's also like, that's, it's God's desire. Um, if you'll throw up 1 Timothy 2, 3-4 it says this is good and is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. So one, we're commanded to evangelize share the gospel and two, it should be our desire because it's God's desire for everybody to be saved and to hear um, the good news and knowledge of truth. Okay, so the next kind of question is, how do we share the gospel of those in our culture who think they're saved or think they're good um, because, you know, maybe they grew up in church and they said a prayer and then that was kind of really it. And you, you see that all in our culture, like people claim they know Jesus or in their mind they don't really think about it and they just think, oh, I'll be in heaven one day. Um, and it's a scary thought. There's so many people that just have that mentality, but they really don't know what salvation is or what it means to follow Christ and deny yourself. And so um, this is just kind of my opinion on what I think this would look what this looks like in our culture just based off what I've seen and what I've done with other people. Um, so the method that we would use in our culture is I like to call it show and tell method. Um, and that simply just means um, Show Christ through your life first. Show that you're different and that you're not living in this um, worldly sin that they're living in. And then that'll open the door later for you to tell them about the true gospel or they'll become curious. But why do you live this way? And they'll start asking questions. Um, and it starts with relationships. And if you hear a couple weeks ago, Cass kind of talked about relationships um, as far as discipleship. Um, but building relationships is the first step in this process. Um, because nobody in our culture is going to want to listen to some random person and just tell them that their life is wrong. I mean, in their mind, they're, they're, they're good and they're right. I mean, they might be a good person, but it doesn't mean they're saved. It doesn't mean they really know the gospel or live it out. Um, and so relationship is kind of the first step into that. Um, once you have a relationship with that person um, and they'll see that your life is different, kind of the show part of the show and tell, um, and you'll rub off on them, not necessarily like, 
Well, no names like Yoruba, Yoruba or Lamb. And they'll begin to be curious as to like, why do you live this kind of life? Um, and that'll kind of that'll open the door for you to share the gospel with them because they'll be like, why are you? Why do you live this way as opposed to somebody that's over here living this way? What's different about you? And that'll open the door for you to start telling them the gospel. Um, and building a relationship looks like um, it's more than just seeing them at church or at a room. It's um, you know you need to invest in that person. You know, get their number, meet with them, hang out with them, and just be a genuine friend. Like, really care about their life, and really just do more outside of these walls. Like, go get lunch, go get dinner, go, you know, hang out on the weekends, do whatever. Um, and that'll, that's how you really build a relationship with people. It's not just a, hey, how are you, how's your week at church? Like, you got to do more than just, you know, basic stuff. you got to show them that you care. But during this kind of building relationships, um, it is a must that you live your life Christ-like and walk in the Spirit because in these relationship times, this is when they're going to see your life. And this is when they're going to really, it's going to make or break, you know, how they see God, how they see the gospel. Because if you're living your life the same as somebody else who's not a Christian, then what's the difference between you and them other than you believing in some higher power that, you know, in their mind may or may not exist. So during this relationship time, you know, Live your life in such a way. Sorry, this chair is bothering you. I can see it in your minds. Oh, I didn't even notice it. I, I can just see it on people's faces. Um, I can ditch you in a minute if I need to. I just okay. <laughs> they said yes. I'm sorry. I, stand. I just wanted to be able to see everybody. Um, okay. So, but um, like I said, during this time, you really got to live a Christ-like life because if not, I mean, they're not gonna. You're gonna miss the whole show part, and you're not gonna be able to tell them the gospel because they're gonna think, "Well, you live your life this way, and so does this person. So, what does it matter?" Um, so, try to throw up Galatians five, twenty-two through twenty-five. These are the fruits of the spirit, and this is what you know you need to display, and you should display as a Christian um, and a follower of Christ. Like these are what you need to display in this time of building a relationship with this person. Um, so the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Um, Trey, we go to Matthew 7, 18 through 20. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a deceased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down. And thrown into the fire. Thus, you will recognize them by your fruits, um, by their fruits. And so, you know, walk in the spirit and live according to the word. Um, display fruits because, like it says, um, you'll know them by their fruits. They'll know you by your fruits. They'll know that hey, he's different than this person over here. So he must have something. Yes. What were those verses? Um, first ones was Galatians five twenty three through twenty five, and then Matthew seven eighteen through twenty. And I can post these later if you want, because it's there's a lot more to come. So, um, and so here's some things that we kind of we kind of overlook, and we've kind of just been like, oh, it's okay if I do these. You know, I have I can just go repent, and like yes, you, you can repent, and, and they know that's what we should do. But when you're trying to build this relationship, if you're not living in fruits of the spirit and walking in the spirit, then you're going to be no different. And so one. Um, Cussing and corrupt talk. Um, Trey put up Ephesians 4.29. says, Let no corrupt talking come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Um, Trey, Mark 7.14-23. And he called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand, there is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left, left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart, but his stomach, and is expelled? And he said, What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, Idolatry, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. So, um, like just corrupt talk, um, like it says in the previous verse in Ephesians. Um, 
that means you know we shouldn't talk about sexual things. We shouldn't talk about um, adultery. We shouldn't talk about you know murder. We shouldn't talk about envy, slander, pride. We should, these are things we shouldn't talk about because that is what you know corrupt talk is, along with cussing, you know, using the Lord's name in vain, whatever. Um, and then Colossians three eight through ten. But now you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. So don't lie as well, obviously. Um, in James 3, verse 10, from the same mouth come blessing and cursing. These things ought not to be so. And so just right there, you know, these are things that we just kind of really overlook. Like, if we're trying to live a Christ-like life and we're around these people, like, don't cuss around them. Obviously, I mean, it's a sin anyways. And don't corrupt talk. It is also a sin. Um, but I think a lot of times we're, we kind of, like, justify our corrupt talk. Like, we make these dirty jokes or we start talking about these things. Um, you know, you may be in a group of guys and you're talking about, you know, girls and stuff. And you, like, aren't saying nice things and talking about things you shouldn't talk about. Like, if you've got somebody with you that's not a believer, like, what different are you than those living in the world? Um, and one example of this, um, back in Jacksonville, was there was a guy in our small group, I don't think I mentioned him before. Um, he's not really a believer, so we've been trying to pour into him. And, like, he's really, he's really getting it. Well, we're playing a game of the night. Um, some of you may know Quick Flash, I know this game. Um, and I had actually left this, um, I had actually left at this time. This, this was in our small group. Um, I actually left. Well, come to find out the next day, there were a couple people in our small group that started putting, like, the F word in, like, the, the answers. And, like, and these are people that are proclaiming to be believers and followers of Christ. And I was told by my, my co-leader that it really didn't sit well with this other guy that was trying to really understand the gospel. Like, it bothered him. And, like, if we're, you know, those kind of people and we're, and we're doing that stuff, like, we're pushing people away that are trying to come to the gospel. Um, moving on, um, alcohol. I know this can be a very um, debated topic. People have different opinions. Um, so I'm going to give you what the Word says um, and let you form your own opinions. Go study up on it and figure out where you stand on it. Um, Proverbs 20, verse 1. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. Um, basically, this just means excessive drinking leads people to picking fights and an abandonment of principles of right and wrong. Um, it is implied that drunkenness is common among scoffers. If you back up a couple verses, um, chapter 19, it talks about scoffers. Um, I'll let you do your own research on that one. Um, and then, th these aren't up here, but Galatians 5, 19 through 21, um, they're before the fruits of the Spirit, they're the works of the flesh, um, and it talks about, you know, Drunkenness, envy, all these. Um, so it mentions drunkenness in there. Um, 1 Peter 5, verse 8. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring, roar, roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. And then Romans 14, verse 21. It is not good to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that causes your brother to stumble. So, I'm going to let... Y'all form your own opinions. That's what the word says about alcohol. Um, and I know, you know, in our culture, it's viewed a different way here than it is somewhere else. Um, but really, you know, focus on Romans 14, 21. It is good not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that causes your brother to stumble. So regardless of where your opinion is and your stance is on it, it is not good to, to do anything that causes your brother to stumble. So just be mindful of that. Um, when you're out, you know, doing things. Um, example. Um, so I should have mentioned this earlier in kind of the, the cussing standpoint. Um, and I'll let y'all take this word for what it is. Um, the word piss. That's you can, you know, form your own opinion on it. Um, <laughs> well, okay. So let me. No, so, let, so let me. Let me. Let me explain. Home. Let me. Let me explain. Um, that is the word that, I mean, I have used. Um, in my opinion, I don't think it is. That's just my opinion. You form your own opinion. But example, hold on. Example, so I've got friends that I know 
are not followers of Christ and like the friends I really want to reach. And they know that I'm a follower. But one day, like playing Xbox like a year ago, I said the word piss. And they like had a fit about it. They're like, <laughs> they're like, what, Ron, you said that? Like, you're, you know, supposed to be, you know, Mr. Church of Jesus, whatever. <laughs> Church of Jesus, whatever. Hold on, but, but while it's funny, you know, you may think it's an innocent word to you, but to somebody else, if it causes them to stumble, don't say it. So I'll leave that one there. Because, um, I mean, in other cultures, um, you know, we went down to Florida last year, um, went down there with a, with a college ministry, and, you know, their college pastor um, used some words that maybe people up here aren't comfortable with. Um, so, you know, like I said, do your own research about, you know, that and you know, let your own convictions lead you. But if it causes somebody to stumble, then don't do it. It's just plain and simple. Um, try to flip Ephesians 5, um, verses 1 through 21. Take some water if I read this. We've got 21 verses to read. This will sum up everything I just kind of talked about. Um, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covet covetousness must not be named among you, as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place. But instead, let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure, or who is covetous, um, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not become partners with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. <coughs> Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them, for it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. And therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is, and do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and forever and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. So, um, that verse, those verses just sum up everything I just kind of brought to the table. Um, so, the next step um, in if you're going to evangelize with somebody, it doesn't matter what situation you're in, is you got to know the gospel. Um, and so, you need to know the gospel. Um, here's just a simple overview. You need to know creation, the fall of man, God's plan for salvation through Jesus, Jesus birth and life, crucifixion, resurrection. That's just plain and simple. Um, some verses for these, um, a lot of people refer to this as the Romans Road. Um, it's good if you can memorize these. This is kind of a basis, like a basic understanding to tell people that maybe don't understand, don't know. It's so a Romans 3.23. It says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by His grace as a gift of redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 5 8. But God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 10, 9 through 13. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Um, and in John 11, um, 2, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? So those are kind of more, you know, in our culture, 
everybody is going to like know whether, whether they're just if they deny God, obviously they won't believe this. But you know, if you ask people, they're like, oh yeah, God created the universe. You know, God did this, God did this. So they kind of already know about God. But they don't know God, um, and so. Once you have the opportunity to share the gospel, then once you get that influence by building a relationship, you can start going into this stuff, and you can really tell them, like, hey, this is what the gospel says. Like, we're sinners, um, dead in our sin, but, you know, God made a way by sending Jesus um, through his death. You know, we can be saved and have eternal life. And so really take those verses and study up on them and get to know them because those are going to be, like, your base verses for just a basic overview of, um, point to somebody to salvation. Um, and then Hebrews 4, 12-13 says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, sword, piercing to, to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Um, so, just know how to share the gospel. Um, and, you know, once you, you know, once, you know, if you can get them pointed to Jesus and they become saved and a follower of Christ, then you can go into a discipleship mode and start really discipling them on what does following Jesus really look like. Like, there's more to it than just a prayer and just believing in Jesus. Like, dying to yourself and following him. Um, and Isaiah 55, 11 says, so, my, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I pur purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. So God's word will accomplish um, his purpose, and the purpose is you know, for all to come to salvation and be saved and have eternal life. So um, next, um, getting on that, is um, the fear of not knowing what to say. A lot of people, you know, they're like, well, I don't know how to, I'm, I don't know how to do this. Um, I'm scared. I don't know what to say. Um, but do not be afraid to share the gospel because God empowers you and is with you. Um, and we just need to know that our message that we're, you know, wanting to give them is dependent on the power of God. Not our ability to persuade others, but on the Holy Spirit's power to work in the hearts of those we talk to. Um, Allow God to speak through you and remind yourself it's just a conversation. Um, so some verses, um, Luke 10, 19. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. 1 John 4, 4. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them, for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And then Acts um, 1, verse 8. But you will receive power in the Holy Spirit that's come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria to the end of the earth. So God empowers us to share the gospel. God gives you the power. You have the power to walk in the Spirit and share the gospel. So don't be afraid. Just know, like, it's not my words. It's God's. Um, and ultimately, you know, if they reject you, um, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting God. Um, so just, you know, just know that um, if you're scared of being rejected, you know, you're just the vessel. God has called us to be the vessel. Um, and so, I mean, think about it. God has put you as the vessel in that school, that job, in that friend group to share the gospel with them. And think about it. If you're not the one sharing the gospel with them, then who is? Like, you may be the only vessel that God has put there. And these are this is their, you know, eternity and their eternal life at stake. So if we're not doing our part, if we're too scared, then, you know, I mean, nobody likes to talk about it, but I mean, they'll die and go to hell because if they don't really know the gospel and don't know what salvation don't and not a born again believer, then I mean, what the word says. Um, so just some things to close on. Um, remember, there's not a one size fits all gospel conversation. Um, there's no formula that equals the person accepting Jesus at the end of the conversation. In order to spread the gospel, we must meet people where they are at. We must listen to their story and see where they need to hear about Jesus. So basically. You, when you get to know somebody, you'll kind of know where they are. And so once you know where they are, you'll be able to share the gospel. Like maybe they don't know anything about God, and you guys start from the basics. Maybe they know of God, but they don't really believe. Or maybe they're you know, misconstrued, and they think they know the gospel, think they're going to heaven. But really, I mean, their fruits don't, they don't display fruits. 
I guess we went to church and they grew up. Maybe they were, you know, they said a prayer there a little, but they really don't know. Um, and so it's probably a little bit the same for everybody you come in contact with. Um, you know, my testimony is different than every one of your testimonies. Um, so we each, you know, encounter God in a different way, um, and we each have a different testimony. And don't try to force your testimony on somebody else. Like, yes, like, what I mean by that is, like, know your testimony and be able to share it. Be able to share how God has, like, saved you and what he's done for you and why are, and why and how are you living a life pleasing to God and following Christ. So know, know your story, but just know that your story won't be the same as the, the person's story that you're sharing to. Like, just because, you know, God did this, like, you were just, like, maybe it was just, like, instant for you. Like, it may take some time for them. You know, you may have done it at your house. You know, they may be at work. And you may share the gospel with them, and I mean, right there they may realize they're lost and need a savior. So, just know that it's not a one size fits all. There's, um, you know, everybody's different, but ultimately, you know, know the gospel, know that we are dead in our in our sins, um, but God, you know, sent Jesus um, down the cross to take our place and to take our sins. So, really, just take all these verses and really just get to know them and study up on them. And don't be afraid to share the gospel. One we're commanded to, and it should be our desire as followers of Christ. I mean, I, I mean, if I ask, you know, the show of hands, like, who wants somebody to go to hell? I can guarantee you nobody's raising their hand. So, you know, don't be afraid. Um, you know, if you are, you know, fear, don't know what to say, um, just know that it's God's words, not yours. Um, and last thing is, um, it's like taking a test don't study the material, you won't get an A. Um, if you don't study the gospel, you, won't, you don't know it. I mean, how are you going to be able to share if you don't know it? I mean, you're going to be lost trying to share it. So really, study up on the gospel, what it is, know it. Um, I mean, you may not be able to recite verses, just kind of know where verses are. Maybe just keep a note on your phone, like have them written down, so if the opportunity comes, you know where to go and you know what to say. Um, so that's all I really got for tonight. Um, so we'll just go into a time of worship, and then um, really just, you know, focus on and reflect on, do I really know the gospel? Am I really sharing the gospel, going out and living the Great Commission? Or am I just living a comfortable life? Because we're not called to be comfortable. Um, and sharing the gospel is not comfortable. You're going to be in awkward situations. You're going to be uncomfortable. But at the end of the day, if we really care about people um, and their eternity, um, we'll put all those things aside and we'll share the gospel. Um, so let's go into a time of worship. Worship for as long as you want to. And then we'll just go eat. And God, afterwards. Father God, thank you for everything that you do for us. God, thank you ultimately for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins and take our place. God, just help us to know the gospel, God. Just give us that ultimate desire to study your word and know your word, God. Help us to research on our own, God. Help us to get in the gospel, walk in the spirit, God, and just live by the fruits of the spirit. God, put people in our lives, God, to build relationships with and to help us, God, to, you know, really live a Christ-like life. I know that the enemy will do everything he can to distract us and to hinder our walk. God, help us to stay in your word and to walk in the Spirit so ultimately these people that we are trying to reach in our culture, God, they'll see that our lives are different and they're going to be curious, God, to know, to want to know, you know, what's different about us. So, God, we go into a time of worship. I pray your spirit will just fill this room, God. God, we just thank you for all that you do for us.